Another place, though, where perceptions are very different in Europe, if not the US, from India, is on politics. There is widespread reporting in the Western press about uh, MPs from the opposition party losing status, about Muslim minorities in India being subjected to violence. I'm not going to ask you to deny or comment or rebut. What I would ask is, are these perceptions affecting in any way your sense of investment in India or capital flows, or has this not been an issue? I would think the answer for that lies with those investors who are coming to India, mm -hmm. and they have been coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, as somebody who's interested in receiving investments, I would only say, come have a look at what's happening in India, rather than listen to perceptions being built by people who have not even visited on the ground and who produce reports. Again, you know, emerging markets do carry this burden of you're the emerging market, you have every business to ask us for help or every business to speak about every issue on which you need to play a constructive role, but yet the prescriptions are ours. I would want to ask if human... That's not to say or not to even imply that I, I, I accept the uh, perception that you're referring to. India has the second largest Muslim population in the world. And the population is only growing in numbers. If there is a perception or if there's in reality their lives are difficult or made difficult with the support of the state, which is what is implied in most of these write-ups. I would ask, will this happen in India in the sense, will the Muslim population be growing than what it was in 1947? As opposed to, let us say, I take the name of the country and therefore the contrast can be sharper as opposed to Pakistan, which was formed at the same time India was divided into two, Pakistan. Pakistan declared itself an Islamic country, but however it said, minorities will be protected. Every minority has been dwindling in its number, or if I may use the word which is harsher, decimated in Pakistan. Even some of the Muslim sects have also been decimated. Violence prevails against uh, Muhajirs, Shia, and every other group you can name, which is not accepted by the mainstream, I don't know, Sunnis probably. Whereas in India, you would find every strand of Muslim doing their business, their children getting educated, fellowships are being given by the government. And I would want to see where exactly is that one state where. And again, law and order is a very state subject. It's not the government of India subject. Each province has its elected government. They take care of the law and order in those states. So across the board in India, if violence is happening to make Muslims get affected, itself is a fallacy as a statement. It cannot be so. Each province and its police are different. They, they are run by the elected governments in those provinces. So that itself tells you how these reports have no clue of the law and order systems in India. To say it's all the blame of government of India, I would want to say, then tell me, between 2014 and today, has the population dwindled? Has the deaths been disproportionately high in any one particular community? So I would rather invite these people who write these reports to come to India. I'll host them. I'll host them. Let them come and let them travel on India and prove their point. 